Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 6.34 and I'd like to do a roll call. Um, uh, Chris Shipper present. Linda Andros. Present. John Fusick. Present. Marty McLaughlin. Present. Susan Schweitzer. Present. All right, all commissioners present. Guests in the uh, audience and in the uh, Zoom call. I see Robin Bates Mason, Robin Fryer, Marty Skrlunis, and on the screen, uh, Peter Hansen. Present. And John Steele. 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 Sorry, sorry, my bad. Got it. Forget about me, Chris. And Tiger Man. How could we forget, right? It's all good. Excuse yeah, me? Don't forget about me. And Kimberly Norton. Okay, got it. Right, I'm multitasking here, the, the full extent of my ability. So um, I'd like to have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of February 17th. Motion to approve. Back that motion. All right, Second. Marty seconded. Any discussion or changes? Um, I'll, I'll note one change. Uh, uh, there's a mention of uh, pollution booms. It was spelt as boons, B-O-O-N-S. That would be the only correction to make in my, from what I see. So with that correction, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, Susan. Sorry for that mistake that got through. Right, then let's go right to the um, uh, start of the agenda. And what I'm going to ask is for Linda Andros to roll through uh, the presentation on gas powered leaf blowers. Uh, and that will be followed by a discussion among commissioners and by uh, attendees in this meeting. And so now I'm going to share screen and pull up this presentation. That's not it. <laughs> yeah, but the technology. Yeah, but the technology. Is <laughs> oh, one of those I quadrants. Seen. I haven't seen no, one I don't of know those how I in got a that while. In my thing here, but I did. So, <laughs> Zoom. That's not my presentation. Let <laughs> me go to unshare. Maybe I could though. I mean, there must be something. Stop I that do. share. Put it in a quadrant. Come back again. One second. I'm just going to scroll down <laughs> and make sure it's on my system. There it is, okay. So here we go. Uh -oh. Share screen. Now, why isn't it letting me share my screen? Oh, it's trying to share, oh, there it is. Thank you. Okay, there it is. Right. Hey. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like at this point, this presentation is a little redundant because everybody here and on the Zoom knows all of this information already. But I, I will just begin with um, the fact the genesis of this project uh, started in the summer when John Seal, who is attending uh, by Zoom, um, talked to someone on town council who said that the, if the Conservation Commission uh, would approve some kind of a gas leaf blower uh, ordinance or some kind of restriction, um, the town council would take it under consideration. So um, then later in September, uh, a group of interested citizens met and we discussed it. We discussed all sorts of, of uh, you know, variables and how we might approach um, approach uh, a step, you know, implementing some kind of restrictions in our com community. And so a lot of this presentation is the, is from their intelligence and uh, other, other people who are sitting here like Rob Fryer, who, um, who uh, suggested uh, some of the recommendations as well. So I think we'll just start with the problems um, and, and why we and why New Canaan should consider restrictions is that the leaf blowers are quite hazardous. Um, 
They, GLBs cause toxic air pollutants that increase risks of cancer, respiratory and heart diseases. The velocity air jets desiccate the soil and disperse groundworm particulates that contribute to the loss of vegetation and beneficial insects. And the noise, the high decibel noise, certainly increases risks to hearing loss. Um, the uh, toxic carcinogen exhausts that are created by GLBs or carbon monoxide. We all know the dangers of that. Nitrous oxides and hydrocarbons. This last little um, quote, oh, you can't see the quote in there. I'll come down one more. Yeah. Well, hmm, it was cut off. Oh, there it is. Oh, you were in a different wrong side. This last quote is like in every article that, uh, <laughs> that you read. And I think it's because it's just very entertaining uh, to think of uh, perhaps using a raptor to blow your leaves um, on any, to ditch your yard equipment and find a way to blow your leaves using a raptor. But it definitely is, is a, a, a quote that's used almost in every And then the high velocity air blowers um, uh, with speeds of 150 to 280 miles per hour churn up ground source particulates such as dust, pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, spores, pollens, heavy metals, etc. It just goes on and on. Um, and this carcinogen, in addition to the carcinogenic air pollution and these particulates, um, they have been found by the American Heart Association to, uh, and, and then some other uh, medical associations to, to, to increase risks of cancer, asthma, heart disease, heart attack. So, so I think a lot of the, the issues about you know, the, the pollution, I think that was known, those are well known. Um, the environmental impact, I think, was less known uh, to, uh, it is mentioned in a lot of the articles, but um, I think it really is, there is a high cost of removing leaves. Um, and I found this personally very interesting, all the things that leaving leaves do for the environment. Uh, they provide indispensable winter habitats for pollinators and other insects. Leaf litter is shelter to bird species and small mammals. Um, leaf blowers not only blow leaves, but dislodge nutrient rich topsoil. And they also provide a protective cover for tree roots um, and, and a protective cover for the nutrients and to keep them from desiccation damage. I think probably the most well-known hazard of, of uh, leaf blowers is the noise um, because it just is in our face all the time. Um, and uh, all the research that, you know, basically says it can cause psychological damage, habitat disruption, and that it, why are you laughing, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that the noise travels distance. I thought this was a very interesting fact um, that it travels through walls and, um, and you know, uh, 800 meters away. And, uh, you know, and of course, uh, a lot of these leaf floors are right next to our back door, you know, um, with this high decibel um, uh, sound. So these decibel warnings, uh, I, you know, thought that, you know, we should really think about this. I, I was actually at Waveney Care Center sitting in the village and it was at a quiet, it was supposed to be a during meditation. <laughs> and, and in that little courtyard, three, three blowers came in, three blowers, probably at decibel levels of 77. I'm, I'm not really sure, but they were very, very loud. And there were all of these seniors there with, you know, and, and there was absolutely totally dis, you know, disruptive and it went on for 15 minutes. So that was, that really um, was an example of how, you know, we should be thinking about children, seniors, animals, et cetera. So now to the meaty part. 
Oh no. Well, no, that's not quite it. But as we all, as we know, every day another community, municipality, state is, uh, is trying to legislate uh, bans or limits on gas blowers. Some even to all gas uh, operating machines. Um, so you know, we we're not exactly we're we're not you know the trend there's a lot that have gone before us but we're still you know, we're still in in the uh, ballpark here and uh as rob pointed out it was hard for me to keep up with all of the communities that are looking at this but i think you said um darian has one now and of course we have west westport stanford is Robin, Robin, then I'm going to bring it to Stanford and Westport. I think it's three really that have either got something. Right, right. Nothing to do with it. Right. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's coming. It's yes, it's easy. coming. Okay. Now. So now the meaty part is uh, the part that uh, where there's this recommendation, which really um, I, I understand and I realize that some of these are aspirational. Um, I don't know, and I and I hope that if this moves forward, that everyone can come to a consensus on something on on what's reasonable and actionable. That's the most important thing: actionable, enforceable, all of those kinds of things. Um, the uh, committee that I that we I worked with, uh, in, and Robin and I actually worked with them in the fall came up with this October through December 15th, and then from mid-March through April. Um, I think that's a reasonable time frame for, to, for allowing leaf blowers. I mean, the leaves are certainly there through October. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so anyway, then the limit number of GLPs per, per property, this again is variable. I mean, there's so many different, uh, alternatives that could be used for this. And I think it's probably as, as Rob and I were discussing before, you know, dependent on, you know, the zoning of each community and how they want to uh, address that. Um, this third uh, bullet point here, restrict usage of all leaf blowers, electric and gas on Sundays and federal holidays. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, Limit hours of use, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 a.m. And allow only one leaf blower per property, gas or electric on Saturdays. The last parts are probably a little bit aspirational, but I put them down anyway. Uh, and here are the allowable parts. Allow GLBs after natural emergencies, such as hurricanes, allow DPW to continue GLB use, but advocate a transitional pan to electric powered machines. A lot of these communities have four to five year plans. Um, they start with minimal restrictions and then move to all restrictions on all gas uh, powered machines. I think uh, California has definitely done that. The last one is to consider allowing electric leaf blowers year round that operate within the time and property guidelines specified above and ensure that their decibel levels don't exceed 65 dB. Um, however, if we look at the entire hazards or you know, problems with leaf blowers, electric battery powered blowers still eliminate, the, you know, they do eliminate the problem of exhaust and reduce decibel levels but they'd still disperse the ground sourced materials, particulates. So other considerations in the next slide would be um, uh, that, you know, we can't really implement anything unless uh, proactive solutions to object objections are provided. Um, and that would, would involve creating an awareness campaign you know, to let people know what the dangers and the downsides of gas leaf, leaf blowers are. Um, we could position New Canaan as a quiet community. It is, it is a community that values its parks and open spaces. 
Uh, I can't tell you how many people, and even when I've not mentioned that I've been working on this presentation, <laughs> said to me that they've they're, that leaf blowers are such a nuisance and they wish that the town could do something about them. Um, we could sponsor community presentations and training. Um, there are nonprofits out there that provide all sorts of uh, uh, presentations and certifications. Um, and, and, and certainly consult uh, with communities on how best to implement these uh, kinds of restrictions. And this is something that has been done. Um, Planet New Canaan has certainly been instrumental in this and um, other green organizations in New Canaan is to encourage, provide sustainable land care guidance. Um, Another Ida bullet point was perhaps to issue guidance regarding good neighbor practices. Some communities have, um, have forums where neighbors can meet and um, make their own rules regarding lawn care practices. Um, that's probably aspirational, I could see. <laughs> but it's a nice but idea. It is, it is a, I think it's a great idea. I mean, my neighbor tells me when my dog is barking too much. And so I, you know, I do something about it. Um, Re-examine New Canaan's noise ordinance and enforcement. This became recently to me very uh, a very important point because the ordinance is really it it actually stipulates if I can find it here um, that um, this kind of equipment that we're talking about here chainsaws, wood blowers, wood chippers. Et cetera, et cetera, leaf blowers, snow blowers, et cetera, et cetera, um, may not be operated uh, uh, in the following time periods, which are certainly less restrictive than we have, but they cannot exceed 45 dBA. And that's very, very quiet. And I would say that I don't know of any, <laughs> any leaf blower right now that's 45 dBA. And that's, and that's yeah. That's on the books. That's on the that's books on the already. Books. That's on the books already. But it's not enforced. Obviously. No, it's not enforced at all. I don't think. Um, but I think that maybe if people knew about it a little more, you know, this gives them a. I mean, we could start with encouraging the enforcement of our existing noise pollute, you know, noise ordinance. And then build toward a, uh, you know, a more restrictive plan, um, it, which is basically the next item, which is develop a long range plan um, that would create reduced dependency on all gas powered lawn care equipment that supports habitat friendly land care practices. So in summary, we um, I think this just summarizes the, um, the problems that I just um, spoke about. The most important paragraph in the whole presentation is the last one. Um, the dangers posed by GLPs require immediate intervention. Pollution, noise discharged by these mach machines are hazardous to the health of workers, the public, and the environment. Policymakers need to make, take immediate action to stop their use for landscaping and maintenance and take steps to transition the industry to cleaner, quieter, healthier equipment and practices through appropriate policies and regulation. The end. <laughs> what do you all have to say? That, thank you, Linda. Let me, let, I think that's a, a great. Um, show that you have to show the, the Oh, uh, I gotta cartoons. go one more time for the cartoon, okay. <laughs> I like the quiet lets you talk or listen to birds while you work using the rake. <laughs> How therapeutic and meditative could be raking your lawn. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to open up the floor to all players. Uh, to um, comment on what we saw and um, uh, what your reactions are to this uh, presentation.
And I think what we'll probably be calling it is, uh, I don't know whether to call it quiet neighborhoods or uh, such, but we should, uh, I'd, I'd like to hear some uh, opinions from all members, commissioners and guests. So who would like to start with comment? Marty? Sure, if, um, I guess if I can share anecdotes um, of uh, my daily activities, I manage roughly 50 acres um, and that includes a half a dozen households, um, uh, New Canaan, Greenwich, Dutchess County. And we use a combination of uh, gas and uh, battery operated tools. And in fact, it's, um, it sort of came out of good house practices at first. Um, the stirring up of particulates, number one, um, I was noticing was infiltrating the houses. So, um, you know, soon after the yard was tidy, there would be a lot of dust around on the inside. And if, if any screen or door was open, mm -hmm. we would see material in the house. Um, it also originated out of working around um, glass houses. Um, <laughs> I, I manage a, uh, the noise house here in town and a, a glass house in, um, in Greenwich. So we have to be very careful about um, how we work around glass. We can't blow material against glass. And, um, you know, before battery operated tools, uh, we had to practice just puffing, using the gas powered blower gently and, and 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 that's quite easy to do but i i rarely see anyone using um that function of their machines they're generally operating at full throttle and and i think it's it's a it's it's a it's a matter of management you know these individuals who are doing this work are um are you know tasked to maybe hit 20 properties in a day and you know there's only one one speed that they can they can approach their jobs um and it, but i think they can still do their job by slowing down a bit or um altering the practice of who's using what machine um if uh the job captain has the uh, gas powered, I mean, the battery operated machine, uh, job captain uh, in, in a, the, my properties generally works close to the house. Terraces, sidewalks, um, you know, kitchen gardens, etc. So they, and, and, and you want your job captain there too, because they can see these most important areas to the homeowner. And then they're, they're a quieter, be gentler and they're not leaving that heavy exhaust behind. Got it. How have you made the transition? Uh, uh, how have you balanced your way out to gas and electric and how good is electric becoming? Um, I, uh, for my, my personal use, and I have uh, uh, 12 acres uh, of my own in Duchess, um, it's quite simple. Um, uh, I found that the amount of time saved uh, of having to uh, uh, work with uh, flooded machines, spilled gas, et cetera, versus popping in a fresh battery um, more than makes up in, 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 in the lost time of just dealing with the machine. Secondly, um, I don't have to shower. Uh, immediately after doing this, mm -hmm. um, which is We're also so grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, and uh, you know, so I've got gas equipment for like pure emerg. Now I, I can't even say pure emergency um, with a still uh, uh, battery operated saw. Um, I can easily cut through twelve inch uh, ash trees. Uh, I can get, you know, 20, 30 cuts at least yes. out of one battery charge. And so if you're clearing a, a, a 
path or road or something, a trail. Um, you, you could, you know, clear all of your trails um, at Lantros property, for instance, with uh, battery. Got it. So, thank you, Marty. You're welcome. Thank That's you. very happy. Thank you. Uh, uh, to hear, Rob, That's would you news. like to? Uh, oh, wait, Peter. I've got Peter on the board. Peter, would you like to go? Yes, I like the presentation. I agree with it a hundred percent. I have two comments. One, leaves are not evil. Leaves are in fact very good fertilizer for one's lawn. If your lawn has a few leaves on it, it's very simple to use a mulching mower and almost any mower can be converted easily into a mulching mower. You just cover up the place where the uh, grass and leaves are blown out or blown into a bag or whatever. And it's a Cuisinart. It chews up the grass clippings and the leaves and leaves them there. And they are wonderful fertilizer, better than Scott's Turf Builder because they're not chemicals. And number two, the city of Paris, France has decided that excess noise is a health hazard and shortens lives. And they are installing noise meters with cameras on the streets and they will warn and fine the operators of vehicles, motorcycles, cars, you know, kids like to make a lot of noise and they will warn and find those who make excess noise. Paris, France considers noise a health hazard that's shortening lives. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. That's a, a, a great comment. Um, Rob, would you like to have a few yeah, words, please? Um, first of all, let me just- Are can, you on the screen or not? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm yeah, on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But can, can people yeah. out there hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. You have to speak up. Are you on mute? Are we on mute? No. No. Can you hear me? I think you might need to get a little closer to the. No, we're no, sorry. No, no. Let's see if we, if we uh, unmute. Bad, Rob. Okay. Jack, right. can you don't hear me? Too loud. So, uh, first of all, just to thank the commission for taking this up. Um, it's important to me. I think. That allows I wouldn't be here. Um, and to, to all involved, to, to Linda in particular, putting the presentation together to plan and detail them, and, and, and you, Robin, for putting some focus on this issue with putting pieces in Planet UK in a newsletter, uh, getting you know, expert, uh, the, the writings of experts, and putting them out there because I think this is. Mostly an education exercise. People just don't understand. To Peter's point, he's absolutely right. I mean, we mulch our leaves. I only use electric blowers and mowers, um, but yeah, we mulch the leaves. And guess what? We have robins all over our lawn in the spring. We have not as many fireflies as in the Landrus firefly exchange, but we have tons of them. And our neighbor who blows everything all summer long they blow the grass cuttings off the leaves and then the spring and the fall they blow the leaves uh, sorry brass cutting bra grass clippings off the lawn no fireflies no robbers no worm eating thing i mean he's absolutely right they, they, they there are alternatives to blowing right so we're not going to get there overnight i know this, this is a major education exercise but i I, I hope, and as, and as I said to Linda, I wrote a letter to the newspaper. I don't remember it was advertised or the Canaanite about three years ago on this issue. And I, you know, they don't put your contact details, but people who know me, I got so many, yeah, we got to do something. And then I kind of did nothing. So I'm glad someone is starting to do something here about this. And um, I, you know, I, I hope it, it's not a question of taking lead. I mean, towns all over Westchester in particular. Um, and other counties in New York and California and elsewhere are doing things to have things in uh, ordinances in place. So, uh, you know, I do hope the commission will uh, vote on something along the lines of Linda's recommendations and put it with the town council and, you know, let, let us be a lead. I mean, yes, we have the ordinance, um, 45 decibels, 
when our neighbor, on Saturdays and sometimes Sundays, three leaf blowers going, I've stood outside my front door and measured it at over 150 decibels. And I won't go near the property line because you can't breathe. Maybe I should wear a mask. So we can and we should do something for all the reasons that Linda mentioned, our health, our children's health. And uh, last point, I feel so sorry for these people who've come here from New York who thought they could a nice quiet place. We have two neighbors adjoining our property who've come in the pandemic, young families from New York and another one across the street. Um, we have jobs in New York. They're only here on weekends. And they say, even on Saturdays and Sunday, what the hell? You know, it's, please, these people, they didn't sign up for this, um, nor did any of us. So um, thank you for what you've done um, so far as a commission. And uh, I hope we can move this forward and improve our, our lives and our health and the health of the planet. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Thank, thank you so much. much. Um, you might want to mute your And I, and I would say, yes, you have a voice on the Conservation Commission uh, to hear it. I think I see John Seal would like to say a word. Yes, thank you. First of all, thank you so much to Linda for this presentation, for pulling together all this information and running with this topic, uh, which you know, I also think is just incredibly important uh, to get done just for, for the quality of life in this town and for our health and the health of our kids. And frankly, also for the health of I mean, the workers I mean, the people I feel most sorry for are the, are the guys who are wearing these things on their backs all day long. Uh, you see them often out there with no ear protection, no, no masks. Uh, these are, I mean, generally Hispanic immigrant, immigrants, people who don't have a whole lot of other op alternatives for what they do, and they're being literally poisoned uh, on the job. And so this is a social justice issue it's not just a, it's not just a problem of the rich uh is it, it is a, a really uh major social justice problem uh my uh question though my my only concern really just in hearing the presentation tonight is uh i mean ev every new restriction that is added brings out another uh group of opponents and uh so I'm wondering, since Linda, you mentioned of having a long-term plan and possibly doing this in stages, could we consider doing this in stages? I mean, to me, the absolute key uh, part of this uh, proposal is the restriction on the use of GLBs outside those windows in the fall and the spring. Uh, and that, to me, that is, I mean, I mean it's, Banning them during the summer, especially uh, when people are using grass clippings or drive their cars. Uh, and so some things are really extremely high priority. Others, such as sort of restricting use of everything on Saturdays or something, uh, or restricting the use of electric blowers may not be. And so I'm just wondering how we, I mean, can, should we set priorities and say, okay, this is what we'll push for at first, uh, uh, to get sort of 80% there, 90% there, and then try to have a follow-up plan for the remaining 10 or 20%. Thanks. Well, this is this was intended to be a foundation piece, you know, something I'm that we'll work about. Can, can you? I'm mute this. Oh. Try it again now. This was really intended to be a foundation piece we don't actually, the Conservation Commission doesn't actually write the ordinance. Uh, and this would be just the first, the very first step on, on how on, on addressing this problem. Um, and that's why I brought up the, at least the noise pollution control ordinance that we already have, because that would be a good first step. And that, you know, to keep the, at least, you know, to work with the noise levels. And let the, the ordinance committee really work out a lot of the details. Um, and I expect that there will be a lot of commentary on, on a lot of opinions. I mean, this is New Canaan. Everybody's going to have an opinion of, of, uh, of what they think uh, should be done. 
and uh, you know, I don't know exactly what body politic will be, you know, moving this forward or writing a five-year plan or whatever. But but this is the foundation, just to, as Rob said, the education, the beginning of the education piece, as Planet New Canaan has also done in their um, their newsletter and their blogs. Um, so I, you know, I I'm not sure exactly where. I think we should we Chris and I talked about. Um, having some kind of motion or resolution today just to cut, to turn this over to the uh, ordinance committee. Um, and I think maybe that's, is that what uh, Kimberly Norton is uh, here for? Mm -hmm. No, she, uh, well, sorry, Kim, I don't want to throw you on the bus. She's on I, the- I can, she is, I, I, I'm sorry, Robin, what did you say? No, I was just saying you, you're on the ordinance committee. Yeah, so yes. I'm on I, the bylaws. Yeah, I'm on bylaws and ordinances. Um, I'm really excited that your commission has decided to take this up. And I think it's it's a really important issue. Um, we live in town on small lots and a lot of people are working from home because of COVID, not commuting into the office. And it's really hard to be on a Zoom call or to be concentrating with the amount of noise that's going on from all angles. And when you live in town, you can sometimes have three lots adjoining yours. So there could be a day where maybe there'd be three landscape companies there all at the same time. Um, that's my own personal situation, but in terms of the town council, um, I, I don't know what Robin thinks, but it would be great if you could, Linda, do this presentation, you know, once we're done with budget season, would you think about doing this for the town council? Uh, well, sure. You, it would, you would probably do it to give it to the ordinance committee? Oh, okay. And then it would then probably go to the town council. Okay. From there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Can I just respond to one, one thing that um, John, John said, which, you know, if, uh, Linda referred to the current ordinance with the 45 decibels. If you scrap that and replaced it with this proposal, this is much more permissive. That's just not there. I mean, one leaf blower, gas powered leaf blower, may more noise than that because this is written in 04 before these things were around so i mean let's just bear that in mind this is that does have to be modified because right, it's right. much more restrictive than, right. than any of this right right yes. but know, i think uh, just to uh on that though i mean ideally we would want this to be enforced so the yes. 04 ordinance yes. uh, or, yes. ordinance yes. Uh, if it's never oh, been enforced it's most important aspect of this is the enforcement. When we first started this, I don't know if you remember, uh, John, <laughs> there's some mood lighting going on here. Um, we asked for, and I think it was in one of the meetings, we asked uh, to have, um, I think it was Pam, contact the police department to, do, to find out if there's been any uh, reports of, you know, of noise pollution. And I don't think I never got anything. So I think I think it's quite possible that people don't know that they can call the town and say, mm -hmm. you know, there is some um, hazardous noise next door. Well, I mean, uh, that's always going to be a challenge, and I'm sure the uh, uh, police department is going to uh, <laughs> uh, give some thoughts to that. But I mean, you know, we're we're in a world of of opportunities for this kind of self enforcement where. You can take a sound recording on your phone, right, and then attach a copy of the noise ordinance yeah. and say you're out of you're way out of sync and you need to tone it down. I mean, if if people you know turn you down once or twice, then you just simply say I'm going to report this. Um, and again, we'd have to you know I think in the end what we would end up doing is we could say we don't want to make this a constant thing, but you know a couple times a year if somebody got reported out for a noise ordinance and it got into the papers, just like DWI or water pollution <laughs> or parking yeah. fines uh, as a, uh, as a thing, I think that that is yeah. how you moderate behavior. Yeah. And I think, you know, we have, we have a neighborhood, we have a town that can, can do that. Yeah. So I think unfortunately that 45 decimal is for, which is quite low is for the periods before 7 a.m. and after oh, yes. 7 a.m. Yes, right. It's not during the meeting. No, 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 no. no. Okay, um, uh, John Fusick would like to say a word or? Uh, yeah, um, thank you, Linda and everyone who's worked on this. Um, this is fabulous. Um, 
I think my personal point of view is that we are moving as a society to 100% battery powered leaf blowers, lawn mowers, right. et cetera. I don't know what period of time that is, but I feel yeah. pretty strongly that that's kind of in the cards, right? And so just taking a strong first step that we can, mm -hmm. limited to leaf blowers, maybe with some incentive, maybe extended hours for leaf for, for battery powered mm -hmm. as opposed to gas powered, some kind of carrot as, as well right. as a stick concept might be. I did put in there, you know, consider yeah. electric all year round. Yeah, is, is, and I totally agree. I mean, early adopters, you know, I mean, all of a sudden I've seen because of the gas, with gas prices now, are, are you're gonna, our gas, our landscapers gonna be raising prices with yeah. <laughs> and will it be more efficient for them to have an electric? Yeah, well, gas that's true. And, but, it, but it's not an easy transition, right? No, it's an expensive absolutely. transition. Yeah, it it's a time consuming, it's no, very no, contentious. No, no. But I, if we can absolutely. act kind of strongly on the narrower issue of, you know, kind of electric uh, leaf blowers, you know, and, and kind of, mm -hmm maybe not stir up as much opposition, but if we have right. a, 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 as little opposition as possible by kind of getting going in that direction, I think. So um, absolutely, it's that's the my suggestion. education. I mean, yeah. There could be a blog in, in the, uh, the Canaan about the best uh, electric blowers, the most, yeah. you know, the most powerful, the most you know, quietest and, uh, and where, you know, where you can get them. I mean, we talk to Weed and Duryea and say, can you can start, you know, for, you know, stocking these. I Marty? just wanted to actually add a little bit to the answer of your question about how, how you transition, I think you asked in part. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an analogy to um, people in construction when it became the law that you had to contain lead dust in construction. Um, most people have, uh, e even if it's just uh, an inexpensive vacuum, uh, gone to high filtration vacuums and vacuums with HEPA filters. And, and the point is the user always comes back and says, wow, this is so much nicer. This is so much easier to work with. It's so much easier to breathe. And, and I think when you hand these tools to the people who are using gas all day, they're gonna find that there is a time during the day when they're thrilled to have something quieter in hand and not having to fuss with gas and carburetors and, and all of those things. Um, and then from a functional standpoint, um, there are quick chargers that will charge batteries in 15, 20 minutes. And if you have cooperative homeowners, you plug in while you're mowing. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, oh, and, and then the last, Chubby's Hardware, uh, who I, I, I do a lot of business with, um, is in Westchester, and they sell battery tools to landscapers because. They've been requested by mm -hmm. customers mm -hmm. to use, a, a, I'm, right. I'm sorry, battery. Right. And, and so if it's requested, then you'll do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so, a good, it's a very yeah, good point. Absolutely. So I'm going to unmute. Thank you. So okay. Um, <laughs> okay. You're good. Um, when I went to the program at week, Wakeman Parks in Westport, when they were talking about their ordinance, I don't know what's happening with their ordinance. It was still going through their RTM. Um, landscapers who were at that presentation did say, we know it's coming because California, the regular leaf blowers are regulated by the EPA, but for some reason, California's been able to say they have to be phased out, was it 2024 or something? So the landscapers did say they, they knew this was coming. Um, there was a landscaper there who's gone completely electric and he's been able to convert his larger uh, equipment to electric and he would might be willing to come and speak to the Conservation Commission probably by Zoom because he's out of New Haven. Um, there's also ways and organic ways and means they're out of Greenwich. They have some clients in New Canaan and they're completely electric. Um, 
And I like like what Bedford and some of those do, the compromise of, okay, we can still use it during certain times. So you're not putting so much of financial burden, but in the summers when people are outside, when kids are outside, we should be able to have quiet. We should be able to go outside. And I don't personally see a need three guys leaf blowing when I don't see anything to be leaf blown, but it's the noise level. Mm -hmm. And it's not just because we're home more. Yeah. I have noticed an increase in the amount of people of, of these landscaping crews so, coming where it used to be one guy, all of a sudden there's three. Um, actually this fall, there was our, the landscapers that worked on our street. They had seven leaf blowers, two push and five going. And it's not for five minutes. It's not for 15 minutes. It's for two hours. Yeah, no, and the noise level is yeah. just insane. So, uh, but I think we have to compromise or if the ordinance committee should compromise, but we should allow that children should be able to go outside and play 40% of the, the gas, the fuel, you know, doesn't get, it, it ends up in the atmosphere, it ends up, you know, because it's, it's the right term, I'm forgetting it now, but, but there's two stroke engines. the two stroke engines, it doesn't, you know, 40% of the fuel is lost in the air and yeah, and there's no catalytic converters on them. They're just including mess. Yeah. One thing, we're going to do one thing. I agree, as we said before, let's have a season when our leaf blowers are allowed and season winter, and more importantly, summer, when you've got some dates there when they're not allowed. We're going to do just one thing. I, I think that's the most important. As you say, Robin, at least during summer, however you define summer, first of May to whatever, nothing, no leaf blowers. I, I think that's not. I mean, I, I think some sort of compromise alliance might not be a bad idea. But I, I, it needs be. I, I think that we've also just come on an important point here, which it, which had been eluding me. But the fact that because of COVID, more people are working from home, that um, more people are spending time in public space is triggering part of this. In other words, it was sort of like, you know, we're, we're not commuting as much. We're staying around. We're walking in our parks the noise level becomes more and more apparent. It doesn't make it, you're sitting in a big office building, you don't hear it. You want to come home and, and relax. Even then you want to come home and relax and not have the noise. So, you know, we have a kind of a, a groundswell or a change in behavior that is also triggering this change. I, I would be remiss if I didn't invite our, um, uh, our head of DPW yeah. to say a few words uh, with regards to the challenges that DPW faces and, and I would, I, would, I would preempt the discussion and, and invite Tiger to chat by saying, um, one, DPW is probably the largest landscaper in New Canaan. There's the most equipment, the most people, the biggest operation, the most land to cover. And I would also say that DPW also moved very quickly to solar on its buildings. And that as a town, we've been moving to solar. And I, I think that that is a good indicative step and let's, you know, let, let's pray that that solar can also be used to charge batteries and create a, a, a cleaner operating environment for all of us in town. So Tiger, with that wonderful setup, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, thanks, Chris. The, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk. The, uh, <clears throat> we've been looking at this for a couple of years now. Um, uh, and whether or not we could transition some of our equipment um, over, you know, to uh, from gas to electric. We've been testing blowers, weed whackers, chainsaws, what have you, and we use them at some point in time um, on a limited basis. The problem that we have is that we have a limited time frame to get all of our work done. That's why you see probably now where you're seeing landscapers out there with seven people you know, our entire crew for parks is out there, um, every man, our mechanic included, um, especially during the, the busiest season for leaves, you know, October through November, because our problem is we got to get it all done because then we got to change over all of our equipment and get ready for snow, right? So, because that's, you know, a primary concern for emergency, you know, for, for safety of the public. Some of the landscapers, you know, plow snow and stuff like that, but they're not using the same equipment or um, they don't have the uh, the same impetus. Let's put it that way. We have to be done because if we get caught and we're not done, it takes a couple of days to change over all the equipment. 
take all the boxes off you know, the trucks, get the trucks ready, and we're not going to go back. You know, at that point in time, it's very, very difficult for us to go back. So we are looking at it. You know, I appreciate the fact that there's an exemption for DPW. Uh, I've been speaking to the Westport Director of Public Works, and he's quite upset the fact that they don't have an exemption. Um, and they actually use leaf blowers a lot more than we do. Uh, they're using them in their downtown every day almost for uh, sidewalk um, clearing and things like that. Uh, we use them we use them in the morning at some times during the season uh, when we're sweeping out the, the, the downtown, probably about twice a week for an hour or so in the downtown area while our sweeper goes past to clean the sidewalks off into the into the gutter and then the sweeper will take it. But uh, Westport seems to use it a little bit more and he's quite upset that their, um, their efforts have not taken into consideration their concerns. So I do appreciate it. The, uh, and we are working towards it. I've had Todd decline our assistant director for uh, our assistant superintendent for the parks department, looking at this item for well over a year and researching every topic that he can come forward with mm -hmm. and then trying to research the, uh, the units that we might be able to use. Um, and we haven't been successful as far as any finding anyone that would be, that would work for us all day, every day. Um, unfortunately, but we will continue to, to strive towards that, work towards that, that, you know, we understand that, you know, other communities are doing it. We understand that some states are banning it. We understand, you know, that eventually, like you said, it'll probably come to pass. Um, I can't say everyone's always going to be happy about it, Marty. Sorry, I don't think they're happy with every single time that something's changed, but the, uh, no, but the, no. You know, it, it takes, it takes, uh, I mean, culturally too, people like the strong machine. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the things we're looking at is the fact that, you know, the airflow coming out of it and how much time it's going to take if the airflow isn't as great, right? So if the output isn't a great, how much more time is that going to take us? Is that going to put us behind the eight ball? You know, because you know, we have, you know, several hundred acres that we have to maintain, you know, at, and it's not just one property. If you can imagine, it's every single town building has some type of uh, grounds around it, no matter where they are, you know, so from the Vine Cottage Town Hall, Teen Center, you know, or Town Hall Annex, Fire Department, Police Department, EMS, you know, and they're having to run from each one, right, to go to the other, you know, so, and then you have our, each one of our parks, which are quite substantial, and we probably have more parkland than most of our neighbors. Yes. You know, the reason why everyone's coming here, right? So right. there are good <laughs> things and bad things, right? Good things and bad things. <laughs> but, uh, but we will continue to look, and I, like I said, I appreciate, you know, I present the exemption, but you know, it's not that I don't agree with the uh, the premise. You know, I have an electric mower. I have an electric leaf blower. I have an electric uh, grass trimmer, you know. And the only thing I don't have is an electric chainsaw. I've been looking at them, but I can't really get rid of that one that I have since you know, <laughs> got a lot of wood with my dad. So, yeah, <laughs> but everything else I have is that, you know. So we understand it and I appreciate it. We'll continue to, you know, see if we can't, you know, move our our equipment and our, our operations along. Um, well, are there uh, anyone in the audience uh, care to have uh, uh, ask Tiger any questions? Speak up if you do. If not, Tiger, um, I think I learned another important thing today, which is what Marty told me, which was if the if the if the homeowner requests quieter equipment then the landscaper will say, okay, I'll try to accommodate you in that. Um, if the townsfolk request quieter equipment, then DPW will say, okay, we'll look at what we can do to satisfy that, but understand the trade-offs involved. Right. And that, well, we've been looking at it for a while. Yeah, we've yeah. been ahead of it, trying to see it's coming, right? We've been talking about it's coming. So we've been looking at it. It's mm -hmm. just a question of, you know, there's a trade-off. Then most of it's an economic trade-off, right? And, well, you know, for us, it's an economic trade-off, right? So we have to look at it from that standpoint too. There's definitely, I mean, there is a uh, there is a life cycle for a gas-powered leaf blower, and they have to be replaced, but they could also be replaced with an electric power system. It's just a question of how you roll it out. And to be fair, Tesla makes a car that's as fast as any <laughs> any uh, V8 out there, <laughs> so you know that electric is going to get you yeah. there eventually and it's just a question of right. how the town plays and maybe there's a, a certain circumstances where the town says we are going to go towards electric and certain circumstances where we say we're going to stay gas until we get there but I, I do appreciate both your experience and john's 23 years of experience you know in previous 
uh, uh, green, you know, golf, golf course superintendent experience in terms of how things, you know, get done now. But I do think that change is coming. And so uh, uh, forewarned is forearmed, as, as they would say. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know if anyone else has comments that they would like to um, uh, add to the discussion. And uh, where I think we're going to end up with is as as a um, as a uh, as a commission is it, it feels to me like we are pretty close to wanting to uh, uh, present a resolution or and again remember we're not an ordinance writing uh, body we are a, a body that listens to the to the citizens of our town here's here's concerns this this topic was brought to us in several different times and where we're where we're headed towards is saying we believe that um, for all these reasons, the town should be looking at developing an ordinance and a plan that will eventually migrate us towards a quieter, healthier um, uh, uh, system or, or, or guidelines uh, for our town. And in the meantime, you know, our hope is that people listen to this discussion and realize that what you do next door affects your neighbor. And there is a tendency of my kingdom, my wall, but when you blow it up in the air or when you spill it in the, in the soil and it makes its way across, we're all affected. So, you know, in the end, we're all in this together. So the ability to, to uh, move forward is important. I guess I would, I would say this, which is I'd like the commissioners um, to uh, uh, support, and I'd like to propose this motion to support a motion endorsing the gas leaf power presentation presented by Linda Andros this evening, endorse that uh, presentation and recommend that it be forwarded to the town council ordinance uh, committee for review and discussion. Uh, in Can I say something? Could I say something on that? Okay. Yeah, before you do that, I think it'd be important to uh, know what the costs of transition for a leaf blower company, let's say. People who come in, who oh, you have a large lot and uh, they, they take care of it. And I think if, before we possibly uh, make a motion, and that's up to you folks, I'm just thinking we ought to know what the costs might be. And, and, in, and in your mind, Marty, it would be, there are two costs to it and, and, and there are costs and benefits. Uh, one is the cost of if the leaf blower isn't as powerful as the one you're using, it takes more time to do the job. And secondly, is a gas leaf blower uh, so much less expensive than an electric leaf blower with, you know, is the cost of operating gas, buying and operating a gas leaf blower lower or higher than the cost of buying and operating an electric leaf blower? Yeah, I think it'd be helpful to know whether or not that's at this stage achievable by uh, the, the um, commercial people who come in and do the job. They want to know, we should probably want to know that before we would say, you know, we're backing this thing right away and get the conversation going before uh, we run into uh, problems where these guys aren't going to do it. I don't know that. I just say it's a little bit of extra information we might want to know. Well, I mean, there would be a challenge in gathering that. And, and in part, uh, we invited Marty Skralunas here because he does run a landscaping operation and has migrated. But I think, your, uh, I think your suggestion would also be that the fellow who's gone all electric from New Haven might be able to explain his cost benefit. Because what you really mm -hmm. want to do is say somebody who used to be all gas mm -hmm. is now all electric, right. and he can actually tell you what right. was that transition like. Right. You know, and there might be an investment cost return. So I think that if we if we had that knowledge when we present what we're doing, uh, because we're certainly going to be asked that question. What would That's the right. cost be? We would say we don't know the cost. Well, and I, we I should think probably we know should... something more than we do. That's fair. I mean, if 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 what you're asking for is when Linda does present, and remember this has got to be scheduled. When Linda does present, we can show what the cost of uh, the cost of operating a gas blower is versus the cost of operating a battery system, 
I think that'd be helpful. It's not a bad time to do that, given $6 a, a gallon <laughs> for gas, Marty. So uh, keep that in mind, that the world is moving in this direction, yeah. even as we go. Yeah. So I, I, think, I think the presentation is good. I, I think this work is being done very good. It's a little early, but it's needed. And I think it, to be successful, you want to have a complete presentation. Okay, I will uh, then, in, if that's one of your requests, I think we'll take that on board and try to bring that information into Linda's presentation. Um, so coming back to, uh, with my commissioners, a uh, resolution to um, uh, ask Linda Andros to present the gas leaf blower presentation to the Ordinance Commission to start the discussion of ordinance or ordinance management uh, towards a quieter neighborhood policy for New Canaan. And that would include the gas uh, uh, to electric conversion uh, evaluation. Um, uh, do I hear a, uh, can I get a uh, motion to support that? Motion to support that. Linda, will you second? Yes. Second, okay. Further discussion? Susan, any, any uh, concerns or questions with that? Okay, I think Susan's on record. Then uh, all those in favor, please say aye or aye. 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 Susan, aye. Okay, and then I see Susan's put her hand up. So it's unanimous commission support to have this presentation taken to the town council's ordinance committee for further development. Thank you all very much for um, joining us for this session. Um, it, it was, uh, it's going to be a transition and everything starts. So I think we're gonna initiate it. We're gonna use our uh, soapbox here and uh, get more word out about this. But I also think it's a quiet neighborhood uh, policy. It's a good neighbor policy and we should be pursuing it. So thank you all for this. And, and Linda and Robin and Robin, uh, a special thank you for uh, your work. Uh, Marty, thank you again. You've been a, a leader in this. And uh, John also for your uh, support in this in this area. Peter, always good to see you. And Tiger, I do greatly appreciate uh, what the DPW does and, and what your perspective is. And I know that even in your heart, you'd like to see us do more electric. You just have to manage the process. I just, I just, just for the record, I, I just want to make sure you understand we, my properties haven't gone entirely battery, but what we're doing is using battery in the most sensitive areas of the homes uh, around the perimeters and and uh, you know as you get farther and farther from the house uh, with you know more more weight to move then then you migrate back into the gas understood so, i understood that sphere of you know closer right. or further out right thank you yep with that I'd like to quickly move through the uh, remainder parts of our agenda, and I'm very sensitive to how far we've run. Um, uh, you're all welcome to uh, uh, stay and uh, listen, so I'm, I'm just going to roll through this pretty quickly. Um, uh, we, we're always supporting the Sustainable uh, Connecticut, uh, Sustainable New Canaan certification. Um, there was a discussion whether the quiet neighborhood, this policy would get us uh, one in a direction towards it somehow. I don't think anything that's an ordinance you can get points for. Like our plastic bags didn't get points for, but um, I can look at it. education and probably does. Education, community Which behavior. Probably already fulfilled though. So yeah. well, it's definitely part of making the Canaan more sustainable. Yeah. You know, I, I got to tell you, um, uh, we're going to be working on the uh, POCD, which is the Plan of Conservation and Development. It was one day one way to slow down COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So, uh, <laughs> let's let's see if we can't do that. Um, uh, on um, uh, river testing, an article is being drafted by Dan Stepanek and I uh, regarding the oil spill and the implications for downstream uh, events. Uh, I just want you to know that that's, that's uh, in the process. Um, uh, the townwide green canopy is a, a, a goal. I think that there is some ARPA money for tree planting, but I think we're gonna need a bigger, kind of a higher level view on our, our tree canopy, which is uh, um, an important aspect, not only of equity and of, of uh, climate uh, management, 
but it's also part of what new what makes new canyon special mm -hmm. is its leafiness and therefore creates the challenge with the leaf blowers yes. is its leafiness yes. so <laughs> exactly. uh, we, 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 got, we want more trees and quieter leaf blowers <laughs> We, I'm beginning to sound like a Democrat, which is a little scary. <laughs> okay. Um, food scrap re recycling program, how's that gone? Uh, do you want to take that? Or? Uh, sure. We're, uh, we've transitioned back down um, to uh, one day. Uh, we were at two days through the summer and then a little bit through, during, the, uh, during the holiday season. They're picking up about six to eight toters that average is somewhere on the order of about 750 to a thousand pounds uh, a week. So we're doing quite well. We'd like to see that number elevate. We'd like to get to 1.5, you know, 1500 pounds. Um, at that point in time, it's a break even prospect. Um, but anything we can take out of the waste stream would be, would be good. And uh, it seems to be going well. We haven't heard that many complaints about contamination, you know, as far as plastic bags and other things that aren't supposed to be in there. We did have some discussion about dog waste. Um, dog waste, if it's in a bag, can be thrown in regular trash. Uh, we don't, we'd ask you not to put it in the composting um, or in other areas um, of the station, but so far it's going pretty well. Okay. Robin, anything else on your side? Uh, just a question on um, the bins. Can we get up to 1500 with the amount of bins that are there right now? Yeah. Well, yeah, the number of bins that we have, we don't keep them all out. So they rotate them in and out as they get full. We can't fit the entire amount of bins in the area that we have. So they rotate them in and out and bring some out. But we, if we had, um, we can satisfy that 1500 amount with the amount of bins that we have. How's that? Okay. I've just had people contact us saying they've been there on Monday. It's the pickups Tuesday. And they said, well, I didn't put in because it's the, they were filled. All they got to do is ask the station attendant. We have other ones around the corner. Okay, I'll let them know that. Thank you. Yeah. Right. yeah we only get charged We only get charged for the amount that they actually dump, right? So we try to keep, We were when we had 12 out or 10 out, people would, it, it, they were all half full. We're getting charged for 10 half full, half full toters, right? So we keep six out and they're full. We get charged for six. So... Amazing. We're trying to, you know, we'll, we'll move them in and out as we go. And I'll talk to Donnie about being a little diligent as the, you know, the attendant, take a look, flip up the top and see what's going on. That's great. I had Margo and Skip Sisson uh, berate me for having overfilled containers when they were there recently. So we want to keep Margo and Skip happy. Uh, anything else on that topic, Robin? We good? Okay. Um, I understand that there'll be some uh, uh, further discussion uh, regarding swap shop opportunities and, and uh, 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 making that forward. I, 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 I do note that it was picked up by the new Canaanite from last Conservation Commission meeting. And um, uh, uh, so, the, so the topic is live. It's just a question of uh, timing, I guess, and, and transitioning as you have your salt seller challenges and uh, space locations. Where do we stand there? Robin's coming down tomorrow to meet my uh, senior engineer, Joe Zagorinsky to, uh, I had him down there at the transfer station today, um, taking a look. We have our old office space. Now that we're in our new facility, we have our old office space where the, actually where the break room was for the, for the men, for them to eat lunch and, uh, and the bathroom facility was. So we have that area that we want to convert back over um, to a swap shop. We want Robin to take a look at it and see the space is quite ample. And all we have to do is kind of spruce it up and uh, I think we could roll it out at that point in time. So we just want to work through that. Wow. And, and so Plan New Canaan would work on um, getting money on uh, the grants, new grant opportunities. So it's, I don't want anyone coming to DPW's budget. So that would, yeah, I, that would be good. I, right now I don't have any, you know, I'm trying to scrape together a couple of nickels to pay for, you know, what we want to do inside. So if there is, can you all hear Robin when she's speaking? Just raise your hand, somebody. You can. Okay, good. Well, that that's a um, a really a great positive uh, uh, piece of news that that will go forward. It had a tremendous amount of support. You know, obviously there's going to be a, a group of people who really love the idea, and and it, it can grow in another way to keep it out of the waste stream, and recycle. Great stuff. So um, I'm ha very happy to hear that. 
there is a note here about a reverse vending machine bank, but I think we'll we'll hold off on that. I do have Donnie looking at that. It's a little cool. bit more. There's a little bit more involved in that, but we are looking at it. So I spoke to him today about it at length. Most of it has got to do with, again, same thing, location, you know, and having room. And then um, what do I do as far as staffing it and things of that nature? So there's a couple of things that we need to work through. So he's right. got some questions to go back to the vendor with. Right. I think I'd, I think I'd like to go with you one time to see one of our containers go to city. Uh, with the recyclable, the single one, and see what the mix is coming out of those. Oh, so it's it's not well. Ty can tell you it's not city anymore. It's when I think city was bought out. City farting. No kidding. Yeah, oh. I think. And our recyclables go up to Danbury, though, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't use uh, city for our recyclables. We use Oak Ridge. We use Oak Ridge. They have their own facility, so you'd have to go up to their Murph. See. Right, I think it'd be kind of interesting to go up there and take a look at what percent going through is of the returnables versus just the general and, and see what that impact would be. Um, and, and the one the big advantage of a reverse vending machine, I'm not sure everyone is the same, but in my household, beverages are bought, bought at a number of locations and you're not likely to make that reverse trip to return each one to each location. And the ability to have a reverse vending machine that's an open system taking all things in might be advantageous enough for people to say, I'll just do it there, as opposed to going back to each different shop, unless they have a system that works. So just a, just a, a, a comment on that. Great. Um, we will sponsor a GreenLink event, but have we established a date for it now or not yet? Oh, it's April 23rd. Um, That's not the Earth Day event, is it? Or is it? Yeah, the, it's, it's the GreenLink walk. We're just, okay. right now we're just having, um, Questions need to be answered about insurance. All right. We have to provide insurance for a walk to the town. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So. We will support you in that effort. Um, and then the Earth Day event. Yes, we agreed to have a conservation commission table. Um, I suspect that we can show uh, some of the results of our water testing that was done by the high school class, and we can tell people a little bit about open space in New Canaan as well. Those the two kind of uh, messages to deliver. Um, that's what I have on sustainable CT um, items. Um, I don't think that there's a lot to report on Bristow. We, we discussed in great detail the uh, effects of the oil spill uh, last meeting. Um, there is a punch list that the work has sort of been stopped for about two to three months. And I hope that phase two starts up again soon on mm -hmm. the trails. Yeah. Um, He's uh, going to start. He, uh, I talked to him last week and it was just too wet. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you might have thought that it was frozen. The he was he would have ruined it. You know, trying to get in and do his work. So he's just waiting. In the moment that it uh, the weather cooperates, you know, the recent precipitation didn't help us. You know, today yeah. and yesterday. But the uh, the moment it cooperates, he's 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 ready to go back in. He wants to go back in. It was just he was there, and he said it's uh, he would he would have made a mess. He would have made more of a mess trying to get in than it would have been worth. That's fair. I, I accept that. I think the uh, the big challenge for him is going to be bringing the stone steps all the way down to the back, uh, uh, transporting right. that. And then um, I think his his ability to build raised walkways is very good, and his ability to lay trail is very good. So um, let's hope we can get this done in the next month or two because it, it is the also in the uh, bird migration cycle coming up, uh, mm -hmm. and I'd like to yes. like to see we get there. Chris, just as a matter of curiosity, are the expenses associated that the town is incurring with all of this, are those reimbursed or from the homeowner's insurance or are they billed back to them in any way? Are you uh, oh, you're referring to the uh, uh, oil pollution, uh, the water pollution? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's very vague to me what's going on. It's complicated. I believe the homeowner obviously is liable and through and, and that liability is normally covered by an insurance company up to a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Beyond that is is unclear to me. I, what was, I think the, that's covered by the DEP. It's covered, then the DEP steps in. You know, the, we, the town doesn't have, we, we incurred some small costs, I'll say small, but you know, relative to what's happening now um, in, the, uh, in the investigation phase um as far as we went in and tv the drainage line brought in a you know 
company to come in and take a look so we could actually see what was going on and see if there was a blockage, see where it was coming from, things of that nature. Um, that's your energy efficiency right there, Chris. Thank you. It, Thank it you. works. My it's office lights off meeting. all the time. If you don't move around enough, it's over, right? <laughs> the meeting is running too long. There it is. That was Kevin's good. I like that. <laughs> you wanted a question for conservation? There it was. The um, so the uh, um, so we we uh we don't have much outlay um in regards to it, and then we don't have any responsibility for the cleanup or the cost of the cleanup. Right. I, you know, I, I, John, to your point, I've, I've been around the pond several times. There's no more, no more oil sheen. Whatever is embedded in the oil or the bank uh, will slowly erode out. And then as, as you know, uh, rainfall and uh, sunlight will eventually uh, uh, ameliorate it. But the, the, the lesson there is, is quite, quite uh, uh, severe that um, uh, something, you know, almost 1,700 feet away can migrate all the way through the storm drain yeah. system and into it. And uh, I, I do see it as a, uh, not a, a black swan, but maybe that's the right term, <laughs> isn't it? Instead of a white swan, a black yeah. swan. But it, it's uh, uh, in um, Kathleen Holland's experience, it hadn't her, ha happened in her 30 years. And I also asked Tiger, um, has the uh, sewage treatment plant occasionally run into this problem where it actually made it into that system? And uh, you know, it, not, not anything that came to mind immediately. So um, we all have to be vigilant. And I think there will be a letter to the editor written and whether we convert that into a message, perhaps in the uh, July one tax mailer is another point of discussion. So um, on, on that front, we stand uh, uh, settled. And then let me just continue. Um, Tiger, I heard today that the center cross pavilion check has been written and sent. Uh, thank you again to the Anderson uh, Family Foundation, the Exchange Club, and Exchange Club members uh, who have supported that project. And I think it'll be a, a beautiful um, halfway house at the uh, at, at the uh, park. Um, next uh, month, I will bring up uh, the opportunity to make uh, conservation environmental science awards to New Canaan High School juniors. Uh, for work done in the environment. We have two or three good candidates uh, who have done projects uh, between the slobs, the science club, and the uh, green, green, green. Well, there's the environmental club and then there's the green leaf. The green leaf? The green league. Green league, yes. But between those three uh, uh, organizations, there's some very good opportunities to uh, support them. And um, at that point, I will... Um, uh, 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 say that those are the points I want to discuss. We will um, take up the discussion regarding open space in April. That will be the primary uh, discussion point for that meeting, just like leaf blowers today and last month was uh, pollution. Um, and then that open space, uh, I'll try to bring some new data and have more of a commission uh, discussion uh, because we are in the process of heading into uh, the plan of conservation and development. And the more uh, that we take advantage of the runway into that, the better off we'll be in getting a sound kind of conservation policy in the plan of conservation and development for the next 10 years. Um, at that point, I will open up the meeting to commissioners. If you have any um, uh, topics or points you'd like to raise, I'm willing to hear it. If not, um, I would say that it is now 7.52, and I would like to uh, call a meeting to adjourn. Right. I second. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very, very much for attending. Okay. Much appreciated. Take Bye. care, everybody, and be good. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Linda. Thanks for all the good work you do. We appreciate it. Peter, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us, absolutely. Thank Now I got to end, right? End meeting for all. Well, thank you. Thanks, everybody.